Hi everybody! The Indian aviation space is one of the toughest spaces to do business in. In the past 10 years itself, India has seen the fall of giants like Kingfisher, Jet Airways, Sahara Air and even the iconic Deccan Air. And even while existing airlines have been struggling to make a profit, Indigo had been insanely profitable for 10 consecutive years till 2018. And even if you draw a ticker tape comparison, you will see that in 2015, while Jet Airways was still a dominating player, while Jet generated a net loss of 2097 crores, SpiceJet generated a loss of 687 crores, Indigo was way ahead with a profit of 1300 crores. And today, Indigo is so far ahead of its competition that if you look at India's non-stop domestic market share, while SpiceJet stands at 11.7%, Air India stands at 10.2%, GoAir stood at 8.8%, whereas Indigo was way ahead with a 52.7% market share, which is more than the next five competitors combined. The question is, with Indian aviation being such a tough market to operate in, with giant competitors like Jet Airways, Deccan Air and Air India, how did Indigo become such a strong monopoly? And most importantly, how on earth had this company been profitable for 10 consecutive years? This video is brought to you by Grip Invest, but more on this at the end of the video. The answer to Indigo's massive growth could be summarized by Louis Pasteur's quote, wherein he said, Chance favors the prepared mind. To tell you about it, back in 2005, when Indigo just entered the market, the Indian aviation space was being dominated by the likes of Jet Airways, Deccan Air and Air India. This is when both Kingfisher and Indigo started their operation. But if you look at the growth of these companies after 2005, there is something very interesting to note. Until 2007, all these companies were operating with losses that were proportionate to their scale. While Kingfisher incurred a loss of 408 crores, SpiceJet stood at a loss of 132 crores, Jet Airways stood at a loss of 423 crores, whereas Indigo incurred a loss of 234 crores. But suddenly, after 2008, something crazy happened and out of nowhere, Kingfisher's losses shot up by 4 times to 1900 crores, SpiceJet's losses shot up to 340 crores, Jet's loss was relatively stable at 400 crores, but somehow, Indigo managed to pull off a profit of 82 crores. And after that shock, while Kingfisher and Jet started failing, Indigo's profit again shot up by 400% to 484.7 crores. And from there onwards, Indigo's market share started increasing rapidly, eventually turning it into a monopoly in the Indian aviation business. Now the question over here is, how did these giant players suddenly fall down? And moreover, how did a baby company like Indigo end up becoming a monopoly? Well, that is because Indigo very very carefully avoided the mistakes made by these airlines. And on top of that, it deployed some game-changing business strategies that changed the Indian aviation space forever. To understand this, let's try to understand the three fundamental truths of Indian aviation. Number one, in spite of the airline business being an extremely capital-intensive industry needing thousands of crores of investment, the cost of flying in India is already at the borderline of affordability for most people. So if you want to survive in the Indian aviation space, you cannot raise your prices beyond say 5,000 or 6,000 rupees if you want a decent amount of customers. So the filter of cost is the only thing that matters to most customers. As in, even if the flight is scheduled at 2 a.m., if it's 1,000 rupees cheaper, people will still opt in to lose their sleep rather than paying more. Secondly, the flying market in India is still at the baby stages. In spite of having more than three times the population of the US, as of 2017, while India's air traffic stood at just 161.5 million, the US was way ahead at 632 million. And lastly, in spite of your charges being at the threshold of affordability, it is very very difficult to pull off a profit in India. Why? Because the most expensive element in your balance sheet is completely out of control and that is the fuel cost. That is around 35 to 45 percent, sometimes even 50 percent of your operation cost. And this price keeps fluctuating based on the geopolitical situations. So the only way you can make money in the Indian aviation space is by increasing your margins without increasing the cost of your tickets. And Indigo was an absolute master at it. The first thing Indigo did was that it surprised the entire industry by ordering 100 aircrafts with Airbus in a single order in the very first year of its operation. And this deal had an order value of $6 billion, which was one of the biggest aircraft deals in aviation history. Now on the outset, most people thought it to be crazy. But in reality, 
it was a genius deal made at a strategic time and mr rakesh gangwal the co-founder of indigo made this big decision for three specific reasons number one back in 2005 airbus almost completely lost the indian market and the indian companies started buying from boeing this was because airbus aircraft met with a series of accidents in india and this included the air crashes in 1988 1990 and 1992 but after fixing all these problems and the safety issues airbus was desperately finding a way to come back to the indian market and during this time when indigo placed such a huge order of 100 aircrafts Airbus was by default willing to sell them at a dirt cheap cost. Now, although the exact prices are not revealed, as far as the data from the order of Southwest Airlines and Ryanair indicate, the discount could have gone as high as 50%. Secondly, the Airbus aircrafts were way more efficient than Boeing aircrafts. And lastly, Indigo used something called the sales and leaseback model that drastically reduced its cost of operation. And here's how this model worked out. This is a technique wherein the airline buys the aircraft from the manufacturer and sells its asset to another party and then rents it back from the same buyer. Now let's take a contrived example to understand this. When Indigo places an order for 100 aircrafts, it gets a massive discount by which a $100 million aircraft could be bought at a modest price of $50 million. And then Indigo sells this aircraft to a leasing company like BOC Aviation for $55 million. Now here itself, they make a profit of $5 million. So after the sale is done, Indigo rents the same aircraft from BOC Aviation for a period of 5 to 8 years, such that Indigo will pay the rent for its incoming revenue from operation. Now this is a great deal for BOC because even at $55 million, BOC Aviation gets a $100 million aircraft at $55 million without the risk of placing a bulk order. And with that, they are also getting a ready-made customer base that will give them a recurring revenue. And at the same time, if you see, for Indigo, it's an amazing deal because it gives Indigo three incredible benefits over its competition. First of all, the company generates an upfront profit of $5 million, which could be used for cash flow. And Indigo can stay cash rich while other players struggle during crunch times. Secondly, under the sales and leaseback model, Indigo stated that not all these aircrafts will arrive at once, but with a gap of 6 to 8 weeks so that they can steadily accommodate the flights as per the market conditions. On top of that, any technical glitch or issues with the engines were to be taken care of either Airbus or the engine supplier. This way, Indigo neither had to pay the cost of maintenance staff nor did it have to pay for maintenance cost of the aircraft. And lastly, Indigo could easily use way more aircrafts with very less capital compared to the competition. Now the fun fact is that even Kingfisher used the same sales and leaseback model with Airbus. But even then, Kingfisher failed miserably and Indigo succeeded at the exact same time in the exact same market. The question is, why did this happen? Well, that is because of a fundamental truth of the Indian flyers market and that is, customers love living king size but they don't like paying king size. To tell you about it, Kingfisher and Jet Airways, both these airlines wanted to give a king-size life to their customers. So they gave out in-flight meals, in-flight entertainment system, and I even remember my dad used to get headsets for free at Kingfisher flights. Whereas, Indigo decided to eliminate all these perks and decided to give the customers only what was absolutely needed to travel, and that is a seat and a little bit of legroom. Why? Because food and entertainment would need equipments that would require more fuel to carry and operate, eventually increasing the cost, reducing the efficiency and complicating the workflow because that would again need additional maintenance. And in order to minimize the travel time, Kingfisher opted in for something called the point-to-point -point model of operation, whereas Indigo opted for something called the hub and spoke model of operation. And here's how these two models worked out. Let's say we have six destinations A, B, C, D, E and F. Now, if you have to offer a flight connecting all these destinations using a point-to-point -point model, here's how it would look like. You would need a flight from A to B, B to C, C to D, D to E, and A to F. And then, you would need to connect A to C, A to D, A to E, and so on and so forth. So, in total, if you want to connect all these six destinations, you would need 15 planes. But in the hub and spoke model, this becomes very simple. Instead of connecting all these destinations with a separate flight, you create a hub O in between these six points such that if you want to connect A to C, this is how it would work out. There will be a plane A which will carry all the passengers who want to go to B, C, D, E and F. And then when plane A lands at the hub, the passengers will go to their respective flights which are B, C, D, E and F. 
and those planes will then fly back to their respective points. Now on the outside this might look a little complex to you. But you know what guys, here are the 4 major benefits of using the hub and spoke model. Number 1, you only need 6 planes in this model as compared to 15 planes in the point to point model. Secondly, by using the hub and spoke model, the planes are more occupied because now you are serving the same number of customers but with only 6 flights. Thirdly, due to the presence of the central hub, maintenance becomes extremely easy. And lastly, it is very very easy to expand your network. All you need to do is just add another spoke by adding another plane to the network and that's it. You can connect all these 6 destinations with the added point. Whereas, if you want to add another destination to the point to point model, you will need another 6 planes to do it. Therefore, the hub and spoke model is that model that can connect people from anywhere to everywhere in the most efficient manner. In this case, if you see, because of using a point to point model, while Kingfisher held a market share of 19.99% with 66 aircrafts, Indigo almost had the same with 17.6% market share, but it was able to serve them with just 38 aircrafts. This is the reason why Kingfisher and Jet Airways in the race of providing comfort and convenience were not able to pull off a profit. Whereas Indigo, although initially in loss, began expanding rapidly without bleeding cash. This continued from 2006 to 2008 and then came the most horrific time in Indian aviation when the oil prices started shooting up. From July 2007 to 2008, the oil prices skyrocketed from just $76 per barrel to $132 per barrel. And when this happened, every single airline started bleeding money. This is the reason why if you see, from 2007 onwards, the losses of airlines touched crazy levels. Kingfisher went from 408 to 1900 crores in loss, Spicejet went from 132 to 340 crores in loss, Jet was steady at 400 crores in loss, but then it hit rock bottom to 1236 crores by 2011. But you know what guys, this is where Indigo became an opportunist and like we saw in the graph, while every other airline was bleeding money, Indigo went from a loss of 234 crores to a profit of 82 crores, which then shot up by 400% to 480 crores and then touched an insane mark of 700 crores. All of this happened because Indigo's operational costs were low and they were able to rotate their cash better because of which they were able to pull off a profit when every other player was bleeding. And from here onwards, for the next 10 years, Indigo reached record levels of profit and today it stands as a market leader with a market share of more than 54%. And in addition to its models of operation, while Kingfisher was bleeding, Indigo used it as an opportunity by directly poaching the Kingfisher pilots. This was because Kingfisher was not able to pay its pilots due to its losses. And Indigo, all thanks to its cash reserves, offered the pilots a bonus that was almost equal to the pending salaries at Kingfisher. This way, according to the reports, somewhere between 200 to 300 pilots joined Indigo in just 6 months. This is how Indigo saved a ton of money on training and onboarding of pilots and became even more profitable in the coming years. Similarly, they also did not make the mistake of SpiceJet or Jet Airways with unstable leadership. While SpiceJet has been sold and bought many times, Jet Airways at one point didn't even have a full-time CEO for 15 months. Whereas, Mr. Aditya Ghosh led Indigo for 10 long years from 2008 to 2018. And the result of all these strategies is as astounding as it could be. From 2012-13 to 16-17, Indigo's average expenditure on establishment cost was just 11.01% of the overall operational cost. Whereas, SpiceJet, GoAir and Jet Airways spent 17.9, 11.2 and 16.55% respectively. Indigo also had some of the lowest number of employees per aircraft in the industry. In 2010-11, while Jet needed close to 180 employees per aircraft, Kingfisher needed 110, SpiceJet needed 120, whereas Indigo needed just 96 employees per aircraft. The fun fact is that Air India needed 250 employees in 2012. And when it comes to customer service and hospitality, Indigo has been extraordinary with the lowest complaint percentages and cancellation rates in the industry. This is the reason why from 2012 onwards, if you draw a ticketive comparison of all these airlines, while Kingfisher went out of business, Indigo started achieving record levels of profit and by 2015, while Jet generated a net loss of 2097 crores, SpiceJet generated a loss of 687 crores, Indigo was already generating a profit of 1300 crores. Now although Jet tried to come back, it sunk down by 2019 but Indigo kept going, going and going. And today, it commands a market share of more than 50% in the Indian aviation space 
with an absolute monopoly in 194 routes out of the 531 routes that it operates. Eventually, Indigo remained profitable for 10 consecutive years, which is absolutely remarkable in an industry that is considered to be a graveyard of regional airlines. This is the iconic story of Indigo Airlines. With that, let's move on to the most important part of the episode and that are the lessons from the case study. Before we move on, I want to thank our partners Grip Invest for supporting our content. People in this case study, like we saw, the one thing that helped Indigo grow while all other competitors were sinking during the bad times was its cash flow management. The asset-led approach that Indigo pioneered more than a decade back is now being replicated by companies in multiple industries in various forms. Companies like Furlenko, Beoku, Big Spoon, Everest, Azure Hospitality and several others are now leasing assets instead of buying them outright. This eventually fuels their growth while managing their cash flows better. The best part about this shift is that investors like you and I can now benefit directly from this shift in corporate strategy and we can actually create our own stream of fixed passive income. This is where our partners Grip Invest come in. Grip Invest is an investment platform that lets you co-invest in physical assets such as vehicles, equipments and furnitures that are leased to corporates. So far, Grip has raised 150 crore on their platform across 100 curated deals over 75 brands that are a part of our daily lives. And they've also returned 30 crore rupees to the investors with zero default in payments. So if you're someone who's entirely invested into the stock market, you might have seen your portfolio drop significantly in the last one week. But had you diversified into Grip Invest assets, which are not linked to the stock market, you would have preserved a portion of your cash. Previously, such new age opportunities were not available to retail investors like us, but now it is. So if you're interested in diversifying your asset allocation to generate some passive income, you can sign up on www.gripinvest.in and with code THINK, you can get 2000 rupees on your first investment and you can find the link to it in the description. Moving on, there are three very important lessons that we need to learn from Indigo. Lesson number one, if you're in the business to serve the common man of India, always remember, people are always willing to live king size, but not pay king size. So always think twice before pampering your customers too much. And as much as it is important to provide the best quality service to mankind, always remember, no matter how noble your work is, if there is no cash flow, you cannot sustain in the market. And we saw that in the case of Jet Airways and Kingfisher. Number two, while good brands learn from their mistakes, great brands learn from their competitors' mistakes. In this case, while Indigo learned the cost of flamboyance from Kingfisher and Jet Airways, it also learned from Deccan Air that there is a difference between cheap and affordable. Because Deccan often messed up with timings and customer service in the race of keeping costs low. Similarly, Indigo learned the hub and spoke and sales and leaseback model from American European legends like Southwest Airlines and Ryanair. And last and most importantly, as Louis Pasteur said, chance favors the prepared mind. In this case, it was the ultra low cost of operation of Indigo and the cash reserves of the company that helped it turn the tables as soon as the 2008 crisis happened. And this turned Indigo from a baby company to a monopoly in the Indian aviation space. That's all from my side for today guys. Please have a look at the study material links in the description. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. And for more such free business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.